the fact that you have that is going to help moving forward with whatever little bit of hours that you can get. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A sponsored by Blueprint MCAT Prep. How are you doing today? Um, not too bad. It's a bit cold here in Michigan, but doing doing good. <laughs> awesome. What can I help you with? Um, so I guess I want to talk to you about shadowing. Okay. Um, specifically, so I don't have a lot of recent shadowing hours. Um, I did a global brigades trip um, in... 2018. Okay. So that's 40 hours of shadowing rate. And then yep. um, I also had another experience in an ER where I was kind of like floating around shadowing um, different docs down there, but I, I don't have the documentation for that. So I can't really use those hours. Define, um, so guess, define you don't have the documentation. Like I, on my end was like recording stuff, but okay. I don't have um, contact to um, a supervisor there to like, if they wanted to verify the hours, like, I guess I don't really know how much proof the med schools look for in the application anyway. Yeah. Very little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Put, um, put so someone down. Records. Yeah. Okay. Put, put someone down. You'll be fine. There, there are no records that you have to submit, no proof of anything that you have to submit. A lot of this is, is an honor system. Okay. I mean, I'll be able to talk about it if they ask me about mm -hmm. it. So I guess that's, probably the important part. Yeah. Um, so is it kind of too late to start getting more shadowing hours now? Like, will ad comes look at that and be like, okay, you're rushing into <laughs> doing some more hours right before you're applying, like just trying to check off a box, which I'm not, but I also do want to show them that I have hours. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the fact that you have hours previously and global Global Brigades is obviously a big organization. Whatever little shadowing you had at the, the ER is good. The fact that you have that is going to help moving forward with whatever little bit of hours that you can get. With COVID, I think schools are just, they're aware, obviously, of the lack of clinical experience, the lack of shadowing, and the adjustments that they are needing to make in terms of their normal processes to to make a judgment on where you're at. It's, it's funny, I literally just had a conversation with a director of admissions at a DO school who uh, on Clubhouse, which is my new favorite social media app, um, and and we were having a conversation, and and that was the question that I brought up to her was was how are you evaluating students who are coming forward not only last application cycle but this current application cycle right twenty one to twenty two, and then moving forward, all these students potentially are going to have chunks of time missing from their application, and she's just like. It is what it is. We're, we'll we'll figure it out and we'll make do. Yeah. Um, is is the Global Brigade shadowing? Um, I feel like you're probably pretty familiar with yep. the program as well. Um, is that looked at differently since it was in like Nicaragua was where I went? Yeah. It depends on the school. Um, I think the general sense is if it's just quote unquote shadowing, it's okay. Um, there are some schools that specifically say shadowing only counts if it's in the U.S. Um, I believe that's University of Utah is one of those schools off the top of my head that specifically says that. Um, it's with the international experiences, the biggest concern is talking about things that you did that you wouldn't be allowed to do here in the States. For example, you scrubbed in on a surgery and you helped, right? You were first assist in the operation, which you wouldn't be a first assist here in this country unless potentially you're like a surgical tech in, in your day job. So mm -hmm. um, talking about those types of things for an international trip definitely looked, looked down upon, but shadowing experiences are probably going to be safe to talk about. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Yeah, other than other than the shadowing, like I, I'm an EMT. I have lots Great. of clinical hours, um, lots of volunteering outside of medical environments as awesome. well. So I've like, yeah. well rounded. Yeah, the, so, sh the shadowing I think is the the least important of the important things, 
right? So <laughs> clinical experience being the most important, really putting yourself around patients, showing that you, you like doing that, uh, being able to talk about those things. And then shadowing gets super boring after a while because it's just very passive and you're just like, okay, I'm bored, right? I'm, I'm just bored yeah. standing here in the corner doing nothing, watching the same thing over and over and over again. I, I know what this is like, right? And, and so shadowing is, is the least important, although you need it. And um, again, on Clubhouse, I'm going to be talking about Clubhouse a lot because I'm on there a ton. Uh, there was a, uh, a Harvard medical student on there and she, she used to be on the admissions committee at Harvard and they said one of the things that was a, a really big red flag and a hard stop is lack of shadowing. If you don't have any shadowing at all, that's a pretty hard stop for them. Uh, even if one day, <laughs> get one day and you'll be, you'll be okay. Um, so again, it, it, it's hard, right? Cause it, it's going to depend on the school and, and everything else. Right. Um, and then, so for DO schools, obviously they like to see you shadowing a DO. Um, Potentially. Yeah. There's only I'd, two schools that quote unquote require a letter from a DO, which obviously you get typically from shadowing a DO. Um, ideally you shadow one just so you can talk about it, but you don't have to shadow a DO to apply to DO schools. Okay. Cause I, I wasn't sure how big of a no, no that was. Cause obviously I don't have any, um, DO shadowing experience and I am considering applying to yeah. DO schools. Cause I really didn't understand DO until recently. And now with COVID, no shadowing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it's going to be up to the individual schools to understand that there's lack of shadowing kind of across the board and, and mm -hmm. even more so just with DOs because there are far fewer DOs in this country than MDs. So it is what it is. I think what you have to do is be able to research what osteopathic medicine is, what it entails, what OMT is, and be able to talk about those things and how they relate to you. So that when you do apply, when you get an interview, when there is a secondary question about osteopathic medicine, you're able to talk about those things. So talking about those things in a, in a primary application, you're not, probably not going to have as many spots to talk about. For a primary application, there really isn't any spot to talk about it. Um, okay. in, in my mind, the personal statement doesn't need to be catered to osteopathic medicine. Uh, there aren't going to be any extra questions on the ECOMAS application to talk about osteopathic medicine other than in the activity section if you have shadowed a DO. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, in that t sense, I guess that settles my nerves a little bit because I was kind of, I was talking about girl, I was kind of freaking out a little bit. I was like, I don't have enough recent hours. And she's like, you have hours though. Yeah. So that helps me. A little bit there yeah um, so okay um yeah anything else i mean we touched on a, kind of the biggest things that were bothering me i mean about shadowing um i'm working on my personal statement right now thanks to your book i have a, a very strong first draft done um for that <laughs> Telling a, story. A, a strong first draft tells me that you waited too long to write the first draft every first draft should be terrible <laughs> well okay so i i'm not saying it's it's a, it's a winner yeah it, it definitely went over the the character count okay. but i feel like the the stories i wrote were good were probably pretty good there awesome so um yeah i guess that's really it okay um, I really appreciate this, this opportunity to talk to you again. It's like crazy to be able to talk to you face to face when I listen to your <laughs> podcast so often. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad I could help. Um, and good luck on your journey. Thank you so much. Plan your work, work the plan. How many of you have heard that before? Well, Blueprint Prep offers the only proprietary online study plan builder with an easy drag and drop interface. Answer a few questions like when you're taking your MCAT or when you're estimated to take the MCAT, what days you want to work or what days you can't work or study, and the online study plan builder from Blueprint Prep will create your customized schedule. Plan the work, work the plan at MCAT Free Prep. Com. Again, that's mcatfreeprep.com. Check out Blueprint Prep's free online study plan builder.